you know, that expansion yes, that starts here has got to expand out to the district governors and all that so that they can get to This is how it manifests itself, and this is how you know that it's actually working empirically, not subjectively. Okay. That's right. Yeah, because the governor tells them, hey, pull up your guys in the OCCP. I need more policemen there. And they do it. Yeah. So they all answer to the Afghan chain command. We really are sort of a poster child of what a uh, counter installation should look like downtown amongst the people, being able to walk to government offices. So virtually none of my staff, when they in, they're interacting with their line directors, needs to get inside a vehicle and go anywhere. More importantly, sir, they can also come here. Right. More importantly, the governor's office is uh, in just north of us, about 100 meters, yeah. and we'll go dinner at the governor's residence and we'll walk there, and it's about 100 meters to west. The downs are out here are really unusually helpful. That's also important for all of you as you transition and you move forward to your next crew here, uh, because you really can't take the huge downturn in performance or understanding. And I think most of it is about the situational understanding. <coughs> Once, because it's the only way that they evolve any authority or responsibility to execute, you know, the hundred thousand dollars, hopefully your short term dispute resolution and a little bit of help past that. And getting these uh, people out to serve is usually critical. Now what you're doing is building something that's going to replace that over time because the participation of people, the district government working, and the connection for your clause of which is back to the government, the security forces, the people. And when you build all those things, see, that's what's going to operate. And then over time, somebody's going to say, I don't have to go to the world because I have a functioning government. Everything is local. Like I said, we've never got down to the district. Well, the problem was, the enemies get between the district government and the people because everything's local. So now as you get that down and out, you know, instead of just stopping at the provincial level, as we used to do, now you're really starting to get that connection down there between the district government, the provincial, or the people, and the representative councils, who, who, uh, and then the security force. Hi, Rip. Uh, Rick, General Rodriguez, just to get, give you a little overview about level 6,696 miles, 11 districts, larger than Connecticut, smaller than New Jersey overall. No, it doesn't have any problems in New Jersey. No, no, no. no. <laughs> um, built the Cabo province, uh, the governor thinks he's a million, but not really. Uh, you know, in all the districts. Built. Biggest thing here is the economy. There's, it'll market their products out of Zabo, you know, so it's just. You know, neither does most of Afghanistan. All the produce and the central element of Herbal doesn't even go to. Iraq. It all goes to the back. It's weird. Distribution is heavily influenced by water. There are three rivers, the Yardadal, the Tarnak, and the Lower River. Mm -hmm. And it's very difficult to induce mobility amongst the people. You really only have two cities here. And they're not really cities, but conglomerates or villages that just kind of work together. And so these population distributions um, focus <coughs> are, are, when you look at our camp, I mean, it's the road and the rivers, right? That's really where people live. Right? Okay. okay, all right. And you don't know whether you're just saying that or, or whether you're actually building momentum. And so we wanted to take a couple of snapshots in time to see what has changed. Uh, did you first get here in 2000? Here, sir, first off, that was when you first arrived. So that's what the milestone that we're using and then we're curving on and comparing ourselves for today. Did okay. You? Right. So, um, a, a couple of things that we'd like to highlight. Uh, one is that under governance, there was no discretionary budget uh, for the governor at the time. And literally, if he wanted to buy you know, blankets to give out to people, first thing he'd do is come knock on the door of the PRT. Yes. Um, now, with the performance-based governor's fund, he gets $25,000 a month. He has been ranked number six in the nation as far as accountability and transparency. Due to that, they're going to raise the amount he gets every month. And uh, it's it's also given him a sense of motivation as well. He's he's really kind of upset that he's number six and he's not number one. I mean, he's driven to, to do better. Um, That's going to go up to 100,000, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then uh, <clears throat> secondly, your employment development. High school education in 2000 will were able to house high school students from 10 areas to come into a central safe location and get their education, and that's been quite a success. 
Um, another one that you saw today, of course, was under security, the ANA. So we are the technical means enabling this for development. We've spent the last seven or eight months or six or seven or changes uh, that's captured right here. How are they compared to the Go ahead. I was just going to ask where, where the line ministry representatives came from. If we're going to try to apply a universal standard, I think we're very quickly going to break ourselves. There are 34 provinces with very unique environments, very different constraints, and what is acceptable in Jalalabad, what is desirable in Herat, is never going to be attained here during my lifetime. And so that doesn't mean it's not working, it's just that we must have a slightly different side of the <laughs> um, so some of them are local, though, the line masters? Absolutely, and, sir. Uh, what about the training? Have any of them gotten any training at all yet? Yes. Several of them have gotten trainings in to start transitioning certain things, such as project proposals to the district government, which sir, was inconceivable here two years ago. I mean, they were just staring at you like the university of And uh, what about the salaries? How are they doing on them? If, if you listen to them, sir, uh, they will tell you that the salaries are inadequate. Uh, and they are. That's, that's sort of a, a reality that all is now beginning to trickle down here. Um, sometimes in ways that, that on, on first blush, sir, you may not like. Uh, for example, we had a, a very uh, capable deputy provincial governor, uh, someone who had been here for six plus yeah, years, but sir, he did not have the requisite education. Yeah. And, and if you look at the, uh, the gentleman, and again, once we get past our own paradigm that we would prefer to keep working with someone who's been a reliable partner, when you look at the individual who's been named but not confirmed by IEG, sir, he's the model of the future of the city of governance in Afghanistan, a young educated man with English language skills. You know, if, if we were if we're really continuing to enforce with our Afghan colleagues that they need to get away from cronyism, then you're beginning to see the civil servant testing a Yeah, yeah. Well that that was the purpose of it, you know. We uh, you know, like I said, we talked to him up there about this guy so we could get him a job somewhere else in the government because he's a great, you know, servant of the people. So